Purple Warriors podcast. I'm your host, Ali Sugars, and thank you for joining us. This podcast is about raising awareness for domestic and family abuse by allowing survivors to share their own journeys to recovery. You will find practical yet powerful information and tools that you can immediately implement into your own journey to recovery. You will also hear information on how you can help someone you suspect may be in a toxic relationship. To support this podcast and get access to amazing bonus content, click Become a Patron for more information. If you have a story to share, reach out to me, Ali F. Sugars, on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. Hosts and guests will often discuss sensitive topics in detail. While this is done with the utmost respect and dignity, this may cause triggers for some listeners. everyone and welcome to this episode of the Purple Warriors podcast. We have an amazing, amazing guest on today, the wonderful Jay Richards. Hi Jay, how are you? Hey, hey, I'm so super good. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. <laughs> That's all right. And, and clearly you're all ready for the podcast because you've got, you know, we're the Purple Warriors podcast. You've got your purple background. Yep. <laughs> I've got my purple top on. <laughs> Um, everyone, Jay is a transformational mindset coach and he is going to share his personal story with us today and then a little bit later on we're going to get into what he now um, what he now does. So Jay, the first question for you is who is Jay? Who's Jay today? Okay, so Jay Richter today is a motivational, inspirational, transformational mindset coach. I love working with people to transform any areas of their life, business, relationships, whatever it is that they might be um, having challenges with. And um, I use my WTF creates your reality model, which is once something that I've created. And the WTF is all about your words, your thoughts and your feelings. And they are the most powerful creators in your life. Um, and yeah, it, it came about because of um, some really horrible things that had happened in my life and, um, you know, doing lots of reading into all these amazing, amazing people and learning different tips and strategies on how to overcome things. And through my own experience, I realised that my words, my thoughts and my feelings were the main drivers of creation for my life. And so becoming... Uh, aware first of all about how this is occurring and what's it actually creating in my life was uh, was really the first step to uncovering this um, this sort of three step system that I've created and um, working with clients here in Australia and all around the world had completely amazing rapid transformation tra transformations within about three to five weeks so super duper powerful and super super um, you're yeah, super, super easy to get your head around. And as soon as people get their head around it, they start having massive, massive shifts in their life, business or relationships. Yeah. Awesome. 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 So Jay, now let's, let's get straight to it, shall we? <laughs> okay. So Absolutely. tell us a little bit, who have you been in the past? Tell us a little bit about your story. Sure, sure. So um, I had a good quest, uh, good think about this once I received the questions and I, I really dove deep into, you know, what your podcast stands for, who your sort of audience is, because um, I really wanted to get in here and really share a personal story that uh, may resonate with people within your audience. And, um, and yeah, and really sort of, uh, and let them know that, you know, this sort of stuff does happen to a lot of people. And then hopefully give you guys some strategies on how you can also overcome this stuff as well. So I'll go into a quick bit of a story. So as a young child, I was actually brought, uh, brought up as a Jehovah's Witness. Um, so quite a, uh, an extreme Christian religion, I suppose, is what you would call it. I now probably call it a bit of a cult, but we won't go into that. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that's another, you know, another topic. <laughs> Yeah, very kind of controlling, dominating religion. You're only supposed to associate with people in that religion. There's no birthdays, Christmas, Easter, all of that sort of stuff. So I remember being a young child, probably around about the age of five or six, and um, my whole entire family had gone around to this other um, person, the religious religion's house, um, and there was a brother there who was not in the religion but was obviously part of that family. Um, and I remember it was late at night, we were getting tired, so mum popped us into this room and we went to sleep. 
um, or so I thought. And um, this person, this brother had actually walked into the room and um, you know, touched me inappropriately. I believe at that stage that my brother was actually awake, uh, but he was obviously paralyzed by fear, couldn't do anything, couldn't say anything. Yeah. Uh, but the clencher was for me. I mean, this person didn't do anything overly. I mean, they broke my trust and they obviously did molest me because it was uninvited and unintentional and unwanted. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was like this person lent in and, and because they knew that we were Jehovah's Witness said, if you ever tell anyone, God is going to kill you. So wow. that specific statement is the trauma. It's not necessarily what actually happened to me. It was the statement around the fear of God is going to kill me if I tell anyone about this specific situation. So obviously I internalized that. I didn't tell anyone and it played out and it absolutely ruined my younger life. Uh, I ended up, you know, obviously, you know, being so lost about it. I would push relationships away from me. Um, the people that I was associating with, um, we ended up going down the path of starting to use recreational drugs. That then became a problem for me. Alcohol was a problem. So by the time I was 25, I pretty much tried every single drug, alcohol you could possibly imagine other than heroin. And thank God I didn't, because if I had of, I probably would not be sitting here talking to you right now. Wow. Um, but yeah, so that whole, that whole trauma, that whole experience, only came to light within the last probably maybe seven or eight months. And it was um, around some work that I did. And, um, and all of a sudden, the whole memory just came straight, flooding straight back into my um, consciousness. I was laying in that bed. I remember what he did and what he said. And in that exact moment, and this is something that is very transformational, but very hard for some people to do. I looked at the situation. I've got this thing that I say to, to help people look at it love it and let it go because to look at it right it's not just look at it from your perspective i want you to look at it from his perspective from your parents perspective from your brother's perspective all these other perspectives if you put yourself into those other people so my brother's perspective when i looked at it from him he was awake he was um, consciously knew what was going on but was paralyzed by fear to do anything so i understood his fear behind that um i understood you know, the reason why that person did what they did to me and why they said what they did to say was to protect themselves from getting into, you know, into some sort of trouble or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I looked at it from different perspectives. I sent the situation love because I actually turned around and went, right, that was then, this is now, everything that's happened in between there is all a lot of crap. I don't want to go, that's not how I want to live my life. So I'm going to send that person love for giving me and gifting that experience to me even though it's a trauma and it's horrible, yeah. I still sent that person love. I sent them gratitude for giving me the experience and giving me this, um, you know, this gift, which was to bring me through all this crap to get me to where I am right now. And then to let it go, I simply look at that person and I just cut, cut a cord off them and I let them go and I let that whole energetic thing move away from me and my field. And it literally transformed me within a whole five minutes. So look at it, love it and let it go. And people may struggle with actually getting there. So it, it could be, um, you know, you may need to, to use the help of a coach or um, a hypnotherapist or something to actually get you into that state where you can look at it and you can love it and you can let it go. Um, so, yeah, so that was, that was probably one of the, the greatest things that I've overcome in the last um, 12 months, but obviously something that happened to me at the age of around five or six years of age, yeah. Wow, see, and that's amazing. So you had no memory of that until recently yes. yeah absolutely wow. no memory at all and it was actually funny Ali because when we were at um our training that we actually met each other at at that three-day workshop you saw my breakthrough and that um disempowering statement was that I had to do everything alone and the reason why I built that into my cognition and into my um, belief system was because that person when I was that six-year-old child I was in fear I was hurt I had mistrust I had all of these emotions going through my mind. And so what did I do? I didn't tell anyone. So I then internalized it that I have to do everything myself. I can't trust anyone at all, right? I can't trust anyone because they're gonna hurt me and they're gonna manipulate me and they're gonna do the wrong thing by me. So I went out into the world and tried to do everything by myself. I would be in relationships within two years, I'd push that person out of my life because I thought, nope, they're gonna hurt me. So yeah, huge, huge, huge lesson. And you know what? I really do look at that situation now as a gift because had that not have happened to me, 
I wouldn't have gone through all of that crap to get to where I am right now. Wow, that's incredible. So, so tell me then, I mean, you said that you had a transformation within five minutes. Now, um, I, I want to address the fact that some people, and I have been one of these people in a previous life, who have said, it, surely it can't be that easy. Mm, um, yes. Can you speak to that a little bit? Absolutely. And I do think, um, I do think the, the rapid transformations that happen with people is, I believe that those people are ready for the transformation um, because you have to almost step into the version of yourself that is, right, this is where I am now. I don't want to experience this anymore. I'm ready to move on from this situation. And that becomes a choice. And so it's an empowering choice because it's one of, I'm ready to deal with this now. And yeah, and, and you need to be ready to deal with it now. And you need to feel like you're in a safe enough space to actually go through all of that emotional stuff. Uh, I guess for myself, I've done a lot of therapy as in I've learned neuro-linguistic programming. I'm studying hypno hypnotherapy. Um, so I've got a lot of these, uh, I guess, little tools and systems in, in place that I've learned that I've sort of been able to bring into uh, into my own healing and into my own journey to, to bring myself forward. Now, the way that this can happen really quickly is literally that three-step system. So it's looking at stuff from all these different perspectives. So that's actually a part of NLP where you're, um, yeah, you're removing yourself out of the situation and looking at it from a different perspective. And um, hypnotherapy is the same. You're, you could say, so for instance, I, mean, I could say, take yourself back to that situation, looking, um, looking at yourself in that situation. And most people will be actually looking at uh, their body outside of their body. That's yep. a disassociated state. So what I then get people to do is go, I want you to drop right into your body now and see through your eyes and see through the eyes of yourself. Then get into the other person's perspective see it from, from outside of themselves and then associate yourself inside and look through their eyes. What were they experiencing? What were they seeing? And then to love it is literally, you know, open your heart, send that whole entire thing, a whole heap of love and gratitude for it happening because, you know what, I believe everything in life is, is already sort of in, in some sense mapped out. So if it wasn't going to happen, it wouldn't have happened, but it did. Yeah. So I've got to accept it. I've got to look at it, let it, and then love it and then let it go. And that's just... That's the simplest part. And sending gratitude to the person that actually hurt you is probably the one of the ma major challenges for most people. Oh, yeah. I was um, going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But when you get to that state, the second you actually get to that state and you actually send them gratitude and thank them for that horrible, horrible experience, because, you know, what well, we can be grateful for horrible experiences because they actually teach us some really valuable life lessons. So sending them love and when you actually feel your heart open up and you explode it, and you know what, you can blow them up with it if you want. You can like open your heart up, imagine them sitting there and then this pink explosion happens where all this love goes into them and just completely blows out all the negative out of them. And um, when you get to that state, you'll have a smile, you'll know it's done and you move forward into the future without that experience ever, ever, ever traumatising you ever again. It is so powerful. And that's the thing. And, you know, I have to say, as you were talking about, um, you know, the two different perspectives, so looking at it from outside your body and then dropping inside your body, I actually got goosebumps when you said that because I yeah. went back to an early memory of mine and it, it was sexual abuse. And, and I had a picture in my mind as you said that, but because I've dealt with it and because I have forgiven that person, it's like it, it was like it's a memory. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a very, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It was just a very different perspective to look at it, which I probably haven't done enough of and I need to do that more. But uh, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, so yeah, and the thing that I like, I talk a lot about is also the forgiveness side of it. So, you know, I know that, <clears throat> and you've kind of addressed this already, but you know, you say, say to let, to just let go of it. And I know from um, only recent experience that when you do, it is extremely um, cathartic and you, you, know, you just feel so peaceful when you do it. But, uh, yeah. you know, there, there are a lot of people there who are traumatised and probably listening to this right now and just going, I am never, ever going to let that person get off the hook and mm. them. 
you know, what would you, what would you say to them? I mean, knowing also what you have said um, previously that it kind of led into your alcohol and drug stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. So before I was able to um, yeah, to uncover that process to, to help myself heal, um, I, yeah, I went down a really, really bad path. You guys, I literally was, it was association. I was associating with, um, people that were recreational drug takers. Uh, it became something that we'd do, you know, once every couple of weeks or whatever. We'd go out, we'd drop pills, we'd take speed, you know. We were smoking bongs, we are drinking alcohol. Like, we were just out of control, just doing absolutely anything and everything we could get our hands on. And in the end, it became not just once a fortnight. It became Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. Then next thing, I couldn't go to work on Monday because I was absolutely coming down or hung over as all hell. So then it started affecting my finances. And it was this humongous spiral that just totally went out of control. Um, at the worst point, I had a car accident, lost my job, ended a relationship, and um, and all of that happened all in the space of a one week period. And I was ready to just give up on life. Like I'd had enough. I was just like, nah. And I'd done a bit of meditating. I did some meditating, and my guides came to me and said, "Is this how you want to live your life, Jay?" And I went, "No." no way, I don't want to live my life like this anymore. And that was when I picked myself up and I started diving into personal development, diving into healing modalities. And yeah, it really did start to shift stuff. Um, oh, going back to your, um, your question about, for those people that find, I'm never going to let that person off the hook. I'm never, ever going to actually forgive them. The one piece of advice that I can give to people in that situation would be, when you hold anger in your heart or you hold resentment, it doesn't hurt the other person. It only ever hurts you. And it is, it is so, so, so horrible that that person affected you such a negative way that you're actually hurting yourself by holding onto that resentment and that anger and that, you know, that, that hatred. Um, but finding someone that you can work with to overcome that feeling is the most powerful thing you can do for yourself to move forward in your life, your business, your relationships, whatever. Because when you're holding hatred or, 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 or anything like that, it manifests itself into dis-ease within your body. And the reason I know this is from my mum's own experience because she also suffered a, an experience like mine um, didn't actually understand it or process it or work through it. And I believe that was the manifestation of her own breast cancer. Um, and she is an amazing survivor. She managed to actually, you know, to, to have all of the treatments and, and she's at almost 20 years in remission now. Um, but mum also did the, the back end work when she got the cancer, it was her wake up call. It was her, her time to delve into herself and she went off and studied, uh, you know, Reiki therapies and did a lot of healing work on herself and was able to overcome all of that stuff as well. Like, yeah. like, like some. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. Yeah. We're a bit of a power team, mum and I, actually. <laughs> it sounds like it. It sounds yeah. like it. Um, Jay, I've got a bit of a, um, this is a very forthright question and you can tell me to shut up. <laughs> I'm free not to answer this if you like. But so in regards to the alcohol and the drugs, did it change your behaviour in the sense, did you become abusive in any way? Um, no, I... Yeah, no, so I've always, um, it's quite interesting actually, because for a lot of years, um, and I guess this is an internalized thing, because for a lot of years, I had no friends that had children. Then next thing, all of a sudden they were pregnant, and then next thing they had children. And then next thing they're two years old, and then the child's sitting on my lap, and then I'm feeling uncomfortable with this actual child sitting on my lap, thinking, are they thinking that I'm doing something? Do you yeah. know? So there was always yeah. this... Um, there was always this fear about how other people would perceive me around their children um, because I obviously still hadn't worked through all of that stuff. Yeah. So I'm so lucky and I'm so grateful that um, I, yeah, I've never, it's, it's never been something that I've ever needed to manifest in my life. Um, and I've always had such a, a, a deep respect and a deep admiration for how pure and beautiful children are. And that's how they deserve to stay. Yeah. That's how they deserve to stay until adulthood. And, you know, to, to, see, to see what... I see this trauma in so many people. It's, it is so, so common. 
Um, we all probably sit there and until we actually start having these conversations, we don't realize how frequently this happens and it's still happening. That's so, right. yeah. Thank you for answering that question. I appreciate your honesty there. You're I know that's welcome. a very tough one to answer. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, and, and there's a reason I asked it. Um, I, I, don't, I, I know you know a little bit about my history, um, but my, my, my first husband actually um, used to do drugs. And while his abuse was a choice, um, I see part of the part of the reason for that is because he was on drugs at the time, and that's mm. why I ask it. And that's not to say who that's not to say everyone who you know has has gone down that path is going to become abusive. So mm. I like that you have now brought another perspective into it, and I, I very much appreciate you answering that. So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so you've given some advice to our listeners, which is great. W what maybe advice would you have for friends and family members who might know someone who's, you know, going through, who's either dealt with sexual abuse or they might be, you know, dealing with the drug and alcohol abuse? Absolutely. So um, often at times I, I feel that, um, I, I do feel that alcohol and drug abuse are always sort of connected to some form of a, you know, a, a trauma or an upset or, or are not feeling good enough or something along those lines. But um, yeah, so when you, when you notice people, either family or friends, that their behaviour begins to change or they just don't seem like themselves anymore, it's time to have a conversation. It is time to ask that person, what's going on in life? Is everything okay? How can I, um, you know, how can I support you? Is there anything that you need from me? Um, just asking really beautiful questions to that person and knowing that they are safe with you and that they can open up and talk about absolutely anything. And then once they do open up, if they tell you something really traumatic has happened to them and they have not spoken to someone professional yet, it is obviously probably number one place to start. Um, and the reason why I say this is because you... We, we don't actually understand this, but a lot of the time people are actually entering and exiting trance states all the time. And if you are slightly within a trance state, so you're slightly in a, in a suggestibility state and you say the wrong thing to that person, you can either anchor that specific pain or that trauma even further, or you can actually activate it to actually bring stuff out and they can get really aggressive. They could get abusive with you. Something could happen and it triggers and they just don't become themselves. Um, so it's definitely about having conversations with, you know, a psychologist or a psychotherapist just to get that ball rolling, to get that stuff out of you. Because once you start getting it out, it then becomes, it, it, it's no longer within you. It's sort of outside of you. And then they may give you some strategies and tips to sort of start working through that process and moving forward in it. So it's always good to seek counsel from, from an expert uh, some people do actually need to take medications to, you know, get themselves to a state where they are actually okay to then work through their problems. So for myself, I actually went on to um, Arapax for a while and it was an antidepressant SSRI. And it was because the job had ended, the relationship ended, um, all that stuff had happened in such a short space of time. I didn't know how to process any of this. So I went on to this medication and I'm happy to say that I was quite lucky to have uh, been on it for around about 11 months. But during the 11 months, I didn't just take the pill and go, that's fixing me. I took the pill and I did the work. I did cognitive behavior therapy for three months straight to change and rewire the way that I thought. Mm -hmm. um, I cleaned up my life. I looked at my budget. I got a new job. Um, I fixed my car and I did all these things slowly over the period of about 11 months but I did the work because you can't just take the tablet and expect it to fix you. You actually have reasons why you're depressed and you take the tablet as a way to numb everything. So you don't feel like you're either suicidal or, yep. you know, hyperactive or whatever it might be for you, but you take the tablet, it evens out your, your mood so that you actually can do the work because most people take the tablet and don't follow through with the work and they stay on the medication for life thinking that that is the answer for them. But I'm, 99% sure that if you actually take the tablet and do the work, you can wean yourself off the medication and come back out like I did and your life is... Yeah. 
absolutely. Love, 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 love that. That is so important. And, and I think that's the first time we've probably ever had anyone come on the show and say that, but it is such a good point. Mm. Um, so thank you for that. So given everything that you've been through, you've already told us a little bit about it. So tell us a bit more about what you do now and who you help. Sure, sure. So um, what I do now is I combine lots and lots and lots of different stuff together. So I am, um, I'm all about science backed things. So I'm all about neurolinguistic programming, hypnosis. I'm all about, um, you know, gratitude journaling, um, all about positivity. Um, and I combine so many different parts and pieces to that. I'm about manifestation. I understand that your words, your thoughts, your feelings are creating your reality and that everything that you're looking at outside of your life is actually just your interpretation and your filter, filter of what's actually going on. So the quickest way for people to change their life, their business, their relationships, whatever it is that they want to work on, I help people to transform it by using the WTF method, which is your words, your thoughts, and your feelings. Because if you start listening to the words that you're speaking, if I turn around Ali and say, oh, I'm having such a shit day, I hate this, what do you think the emotion is going to be? It's going to be horrendous. And emotions are your guidance system as far as I'm concerned. When you have, you have two emotions, there's good ones and there's negative ones. The good ones are your guidance system telling you that you are manifesting on the right track and your bad ones are just the feelings that you are creating something that you actually don't really want or need in your life. Yep. So your thoughts impact upon your words, which impact upon your feelings, which then creates your reality. So getting people to become aware of that simple WTF method and showing them how they can rewire their words, their thoughts and their feelings simply by their awareness creates such rapid transformations with people. And, um, and I am so super excited because I've literally worked with a number of people and I've had some incredible, incredible, incredible results. And these people have, you know, one person's gone from a job they hate to their dream career. One person's gone from working in a government job to a global retail business now where they're, su they're supplying um, Peruvian ceremonial cacao to people all over the world. I've got, um, I've just got so many amazing stories. And this is literally just from that WTF method that I'm using with people. And it is so super powerful and it's so super easy for people to get. And it has lasting transformations because changing your life is a lifelong process. And when you use your words, your thoughts and your feelings, it just becomes so much easier. So much easier. hundred, hundred percent. Now I'm going to ask you this question. It's not actually on the list, but I, I know the answer to this because I really, I really want you to share it with us. So tell me who, what, what are you, what's Jay going to be doing? in the next 10 years. So looking forward 10 years, where will Jay be? Sure. So in the next 10 years, I'm going to be speaking internationally on stages, doing motivational speaking. I'm going to be, um, yeah, I'm going to be, um, obviously large corporations are going to want to um, bring me in as a motivational speaker, um, which will also help because this word thought, feeling stuff, it can literally um, change the dynamics between teams in corporate. It can change your life if you want your life to change. It can change your relationships with your partner. Because when we focus on certain things, we start creating it. It's like when I was in a relationship with someone that I wasn't happy with, what do you do? You focus on all the negative. And then yeah. all you see is the negative. So it's like my thoughts and my words and my feelings were, I'm so sick of him leaving his towel on the floor. Or, you know, I'm... I'm I'm angry at him because he didn't do the dishes before he went. Like all that stuff, when we focus on it, it creates negativity and it breeds issues and fights and all of that stuff. So words, thoughts, feelings can literally change anything in anyone's life really quickly. Look out, people. You heard it here. Yeah, look out. <laughs> Our house, Jay, is coming. <laughs> look out. <laughs> and I do get excited when we talk because seriously, we have so much in common. And as you said, we've gotten to know each other over the last couple of months um, in a course that we're doing. And it's like every time I, I see you and I talk to you, it's like, oh my goodness, we are the same person sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're my soul sister. <laughs> yeah. Like um, so Jay, where, where can our listeners find you if they would like to work with you further or learn more about you? Absolutely. So I've got a really weird last name, but I'll just help you to remember it. So um, the last name is Richter's with an S on the end. And it's actually like Richter scale, which is the seismic 
um, meter thing that was created to measure the depth and intensity of earthquakes. So my name is Jay Richter, so it's J-A-Y, and then Richter's is R-I-C-H-T-E-R-S, and you can go jrichters.com. You can find me on Facebook, so facebook.com backslash jrichters. And I also have a podcast, which I've launched a few months ago, which I need to get uh, cracking on because I've seen how many beautiful episodes Ali has. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've got this podcast and it's called The Jay Richter Show. And you can get that on any of the uh, podcast applications out there. But guys, I would love, love, love to connect with any of the listeners on the Purple Warrior podcast. I think it's an amazing cause. Um, Ali's a beautiful woman and she is creating some amazing magic out there in the world, which I just love watching. I absolutely love it. Oh, thanks, beautiful man. Now, now, first of all, remember, I've been at this for over a year now. So that's the only reason I'm up to, what are we up to, about 40, 40, mid-40 episodes? <laughs> I think you're up to nearly 50. Oh, I don't know. Well, we pre It was 48. <laughs> oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's all good. No, it has been amazing to speak to you. Thank you so much, Jay. Um, we really appreciate you coming on and so openly sharing your story today. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And thank you so very much for the invitation. I absolutely love chatting with you. As always, Ali, you're just such a, um, you're such a sweet, sweet lady, Ali Sugars. <laughs> oh, I that <laughs> <laughs> Bit corny there, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us and we will see you in the next episode.